50,000 people used to live here. Now it's a ghost town. Those of us who were around the gaming community in 2007 to witness Call of Duty 4 may have never expected that a simple video game would transform the very lives of those who touched it. The first game in the Modern Warfare series proved to define the Council FPS, and with it create a unique community of players who strive to get more out of the game. Snipers had always been a part of the Call of Duty franchise, but the sniping community as we know it today, with feeders and trickshotters centered around YouTube, began to emerge slowly in 2007. With the release of Call of Duty 4 on November 5th, 2007, a new community began to take shape. Within four days after the release of the game, Jay Ripper uploaded a montage to YouTube. Exactly two weeks later, a player named Dre released another montage, this one arguably better than the one released by Jay Ripper. Over a month later, Machinima uploaded a sniping montage, HQ Fighter, and today the montage has over 6 million views, proving to be the most successful montage released in 2007. But all the while, the montages seen early after the game's release proved to be nothing compared to what would happen next. Zer Grizz, or simply Grizz, the first of the modern snipers appeared on the scene in early 2008, and would go on to nearly single-handedly influence the entire sniping community. Grizz changed the game, and along the way tried to educate other aspiring snipers on how he pulled off his difficult shots. The description of his hipfire tutorial read, I've had so many messages about how I snipe from the hip, some say I hack or set up my shots, to those people, Ha ha ha, you're idiots. I have a feeling you're going to see a lot more no-scope montages now from other players. Grizz's first mainstream montage dropped in April of 2008. The shots hit in the montage were at the time amazingly good, and his work on the montage only further inspired other players to follow his style of play. Jambi, who would one day later join Obey, was one of these people. He released a montage a year later in April of 2009. But less than a week later, another major player came onto the scene. iReaps released a montage that set new standards, standards that many people would not catch up to for years. Even more amazingly, the entire montage was filmed and edited in just under two weeks. In June of 2009, Muzza Fuzza released one of the most complete guides on how to hip fire and quickscope. The video fully explained to most people for the first time how quickscoping worked and how this form of sniping was largely just a glitch in the game. Our third technique is called the half scope or the twitch. Um, I've seen this in a couple videos. It looks really goofy because it makes you look like you're just on crack or you have Parkinson's because uh, your scope goes all crazy. There's one first try. Basically like you scope halfway in and then you shoot, you just have your left trigger and then uh, throw a shot. In the early days of sniping, there were very few organized teams, and up until this point, most players had made montages and other videos only for fun. M40A3 was one of these early teams, and Predator proved to be one of the best players on the scene when he was a part of the team. His montage with Alien VX featured Alien vs Predator themed editing, and was one of the best edits at the time. The release of Modern Warfare 2 would come not long later in the fall of 2009, and proved to this day to be arguably the best game for sniping. Hex and his Optic team appeared on the scene around the same time, and rose faster than any team before them. Optic had left a definite impact on the COD competitive community, but their impact began much earlier as a sniping team. Hex, the team's leader, was a skilled player himself, and his social media and marketing understanding and overall ability to connect with so many other players helped Optic grow at a breakneck speed. Hex also helped the community as a whole when he created the Optic Top 5 on a regular basis for Machinima. Uh, the first person that we're going to be spectating is Smitto, who is playing SND in Afghan using a 50 caliber with the 
thermal scope. Right there, you got a nice quick reaction, no scope, halfway across the map. Even when you look at it in slow motion, you'll still see how quick his reaction time. 2010 proved to be the starting point of the quick expansion of the sniping community. Sprat, who would later join FaZe, proved to be just one of the many players who jumped onto the scene around this time. In June of 2010, FaZe began, and with it, forever changing the face of the sniping community. The first FaZe ill camps proved to be just the starting point for the team that would soon become the face of the community. How's it going guys, it's Diesel here, wanted to say thank you for the 100,000 subs. Uh, I can't believe we're already here. But before phases rise, Optic hit the first significant milestone amongst any team in the community. Optic reached 100,000 subscribers just two weeks after phase had started, proving they had become the premier team that every sniper dreamed to join. Hey guys, this is Predator, thank you for 100,000 subscribers, that's crazy. And yes, Nerf, I am really 5'3". What up, Optic Nation? Big Optic Hex here. I just want to say thank you for finally helping us reach 100,000 subscribers. It was a long journey, but it was definitely worth it. And we're only getting started. Our videos are only going to get better. So please be sure to keep on checking them out. Until next time, this has been Optic Hex. I'm out. Peace! Along the way, Optic's key players, such as Midnight, reached milestones of their own. I just wanted to make this video to announce that I just hit 10,000 subscribers, oh my god! That's so many freaking people, I can't even believe that that many people want to freaking watch my video. In July, Small Beans released the montage Glint, which became one of the most well-known montages at its time. Then, Darth uploaded their first clip on August 1st of 2010, proving to be the start towards the creation of the competition between teams for viewership, as we have today. Nearly a year after Predator's original montage, she released another, this time with Optic. The montage titled Predators and edited by Fusion was groundbreaking. It was undeniably the best edited montage to date and the clips featured in the montage further confirmed that Predator was among one of the best players of the classic era. Finish the mission. Grizz had another amazing hit with his Matrix themed montage, which also included editing that was years ahead of the majority of the community. Good. Yeah, you're good. What up, guys? Pick up the catch up here with my boys from Face Sniper. I don't know where you guys are. While Optic may have arguably been the top team in the community at the time, they still reached out and assisted Phase, the team that would one day dethrone them. Optic Jewel followed in the footsteps of Optic Midnight, proving sniping was for girls as well as boys. The beginning of 2011 was great for FaZe, as they picked up Fakie to their team, a player who would creatively redefined trickshotting, just as FaZe's leader Temper had with his Temper shot. What I like about it, um, that it's hard, it's challenging, and it also looks sick. In February of 2011, Synergy started, proving to be unique as they were one of the first teams to roster players who played on PlayStation, whereas most other teams worked exclusively on Xbox. The very next day, Dare Sniping began, 
Over time, D.A.R.E. would prove to be one of the most successful teams, who in the opinions of many, never received enough of the respect of the common viewer as FaZe had. A month later, SOAR began. Out of all the teams to start in 2011, SOAR would prove to be the hottest. Ran by SOAR Max, the team continued to innovate the trickshotting game. Dare Virus released the montage Epidemic in April and proved to be one of the greatest no-scope montages of the time. Sprat, who would later go on to join FaZe, released a montage titled Example a month later. It proved to be some of the best clips hit on Black Ops 1 at the time. Black Ops 1 was often ignored by many snipers at release, but the game had slow scope in times and had underpowered sniper rifles. The next day, Dare uploaded a community montage. Edited by Dare Ninja, the montage featured clips from Dare, FaZe, Synergy, and a number of other teams. Whether Dare knew it or not at the time, the team acquired a player who would later go on to be one of the most popular in the game. Rain joined Dare in May of 2011, and proved to be just the starting point of his successful career. Psycho also began in 2011, further adding to the long list of innovative teams who opened their doors in 2011. In our obscurity, in all this vastness, there is no hint that hope will come from elsewhere to save us from ourselves. Darth, one of the earliest teams, reached what many considered to be the height of the sniping community in July. Darth released a three-part montage titled Significance, to the tune of hundreds of thousands of views in each part. Many considered Significance to be one of the greatest montage series ever released, and the product of the greatest era for Darth. A month later, another challenger joined the game. Saw appeared on the scene with the release of what would become their long-running series, Play With Saw. The man who became the poster child for feeding joined Optic in 2011. Austin Pimage brought a whole new talent to Optic and hoped to revive the team as it slipped from its throne as more and more teams came to compete against them. In FaZe's Ilcam's episode 35, FaZe Prizzy hit the first popularly known 720 off the crane on High Rise on MW2. This set off a firestorm of attempts by other players to attempt to match and even top the 720 that Prizzy hit. 2011 would end with one last significant team joining the race. Spacebound blasted off for the first time in November. Two thousand and twelve kicked off with an amazing shot by Twist and a montage by Phase Agony that tossed back to COD Four in an era where many players were spending their time on MW two or even MW three. Agony would quickly be placed under the microscope later that year. The heat would come when Agony released another montage with Wartech and MW three just a couple weeks after their montage on Call of Duty four. This montage, titled Coexistence, was uploaded on the FaZe channel in January, and was later taken down when it was discovered that one of the clips by Agony was faked. The controversy this caused for FaZe forced them to kick Agony from the team. Um, yes, we did get kicked out of FaZe, so that's not a rumor. And no hate on FaZe or anything. Um, Coexistence was the deal they did with, was doing with Wartech. It was finished, uploaded on FaZe, some pretty insane ratings, and they spotted a single collab that was edited to look like a triple, and after they saw that, they guessed that there were more, but there wasn't, there's was just the one, if you saw it, it was on interchange, like, it's pretty easy to tell, like, and the explanation why I did that, why we did that. Devin, like, I didn't have many insane clips, I just had basic quad feeds, I didn't play a lot, and I just wanted to see myself with one good clip, and 
I edit, the main reason, like, I thought I hit a triple dot game, like, months ago, and I saved that clip to see what I could do with it, because it should have been a triple, but, like, I was stupid, and I just edit it, and I was like, oh, it looked cool, it looked like a triple. Left it on my desktop for two months as an ABI. The dual page came around, basically done, and I'm like, I want a clip in there, or a good one. And of course I threw that in, which was probably my biggest mistake I've ever done. Like, I've been accused before, but that has to be my biggest, biggest mistake. Just as Darth had with significance, many believe Faze hit their height in February of 2012, when they released episode 38 of Ilkams. It's considered by many fans to be the greatest Ilkams episode of all time. Sinatra. I am literally in the air right now, rapping up a store. This first class, I am so new at this. Used to ride a metro, let us hit this retro. Like the infrareds on my feet, baby, let's go. So not what they know me by, not just what they call me. Gotta catch a flight, but the fans wanna stall me. Life of a dawn, change just gone. Always in a lab with the fresh kicks on. I'm at the MGM, rocking MCM. Bobby Sacks are on my arm, it's only 10 p.m. Got a rat pack with me going ham at the hotel. Name brand, everything, fuck a wholesale. After the Agony Twins were kicked from FaZe in January, they went out on their own, motivated to continue on their dreams of success and pursue their passions of sniping. In March, Agony launched Obey, a new team they had created who would rise to challenge FaZe in popularity, just as Soar and countless other teams had. Days later, Soar Shatters hit a double barrel roll, further raising standards for those who followed. The greatest feeder in the game, Pomage, departed Optic in March, further showing the decline of Optic's once very respected sniping team. Pomage made the decision to join FaZe, and ultimately, both him and FaZe would continue to rise in popularity throughout the rest of the year. Lucid also helped redefine the creativity of the game in March, when he hit the first popularized C4 shot. Lucid's shot would be copied in countless montages and would even appear in the promo for ERA two months later. Fruity also hit a bill off high rise, which would later appear in the ERA promo. Darth reached 100,000 subscribers in April, having been on YouTube for less than two years and solidifying their spot as one of the greatest teams early on. FaZe Agony got kicked from FaZe. Uh, Temper said on his Twitter that the reason he got kicked is because he set up two triples, and that's like the fourth time that he set up shots. Agony had previously gotten his second chance to return to FaZe, but was kicked for a second time in May once again for faking clips. Many believe the Agony Twins' sniping careers were over, but they proved to have continued success on their own team, Obey. In May, the Era Uprising promo would drop, featuring some of the most amazing clips hit throughout 2012. Despite all the controversy that surrounded Agony as they got kicked from FaZe twice, they seemed to only benefit from the publicity. Their team, Obey, reached 100,000 subscribers in June, just three months after the team started. All the while, as some players reaped the benefits of their publicity, others struggled no matter how hard they tried. Some players believed having connections to leaders was the only way to get on big teams. Vox's entry to a sore recruitment challenge proved to be just another example. His 13 minute submission featured a variety of insane shots and to this day has nearly 1 million views, a milestone few recruitment challenge responses has ever achieved. In the end, Vox never made it to soar. But many speculated a fair number of the shots hit in the video were set up. In June, the competitive team Envious created their own sniping team. The Envy team proved to be unique as it was isolated from the rest of the mainstream sniping community and all the while maintained a fairly consistent roster, even including the original sniper, Grizz. 
After previous struggles with an old channel, a team called Horizon started again, and this time found more success than they had in their previous attempts. All the while though, they still failed to catch up to those who had started before them after performing this fresh start. Rain departed Dare to join Obey in August. Rain's fame that he would later garner would later prove to many how he, like many other players before him, saw the community as a ladder system. Joining more popular teams in a stepping stone style became a more acceptable and commonplace nature thing to do for most players. Soar Natural created another unique shot that many players would try to duplicate. Natural's shot on high rise, like many specific spots on the high rise before it, helped solidify the map as one of the greatest and most popular in the COD franchise's history amongst snipers. September of 2012 laid witness to one of the greatest and most popular montages to date. Pomage released Catalyst, which would go on to become one of the greatest solo montage series of all time. All the while, FaZe continued to rise as optics slid out of the sniping community, but the friendship between Temper and Hex continued to exist. They even both appeared in Machinima Show, the controller, which paired a military veteran with a pro gamer. Additionally, both of them were invited to a special event for Medal of Honor Warfighter. Lucky7 appeared on the scene in 2012 as well, proving to be one of the last significant trickshotting teams to start in a year that was filled with great new teams. Dare Sniping came to an end in October of 2012, when they released their last official video for the channel. Though the team continued to upload in the Dare Sniping channel here and there, by November they had switched over to their new channel that they still use today, Dare Rising. FaZe would end the year strong, reaching 1 million subscribers, a feat that to this day has only been accomplished by one other team, Optic. All the while, OBJ and the other FaZe members were hitting insane shots, but were still welcoming the next generation of the team on board. Reigns introducing to FaZe went up just days after the 1 million montage was uploaded. As teams like FaZe, Obey, and Soar consumed the vast number of fans on YouTube, various other teams remained underrated and thus failed to earn their deserved respect. Riot Style was just one of these teams. 2013 began well for the majority of the sniping community. Both Psycho and Era put up montages on the same day in celebration of hitting 100,000 subscribers on YouTube. But the momentum for Era did not last. In March, the Era Uprising channel was hacked. We're moving channels due to hacking issues. Go sub to the new channel, it's going to be in the description. Expect big things like always. Um, unfortunately, the hacker won't let us keep the channel unless he is a leader. And we say fuck. They instead started their new channel, Era Eternity, in March. While some teams, like Synergy, continued to reach subscriber milestones in 2013, other teams were not as satisfied with their progress, like Darth. You know, we've been around for a very long time, and also I feel like there's not been any other team that has brought along as much change as we have, and also has been as consistent as we have as long. Now, there are not, not many teams, but... For us personally, it was very difficult to watch other teams that we felt weren't as good as us or inferior to us pass us up in subscribers or viewers. And I know, I think most people know that subscribers and viewers don't equal, you know, a better team. But for us personally, it was very difficult to watch. What is up, guys? This is Face Bass, and I am here today with a huge announcement, something that has been very highly requested from us, the Phase Recruitment Challenge. Many snipers were enjoying Black Ops 2, despite the early patches in the snipers, so when FaZe had a big announcement to make, most players listened in. FaZe started the FaZe 5 challenge in March of 2013, in hopes of recruiting 5 players to FaZe. The popularity of the challenge led nearly one player in seemingly every couple lobbies to pursue the challenge. Six months after the start of Dare Rising, the channel had reached 100,000 subscribers on YouTube, proving Dare was still a significant team that deserved the respect of the rest of the community. In May, Pomage tried to use his popularity and influence to start something new in the sniping community. E-sniping, similar to regular MLG play but with snipers, was common across the pond in Europe, and Pomage attempted to bring the competition to North America. 
but Pomage's efforts proved to be unsuccessful. On the other side, you are going to have the guys of Wolfpack, Kurzu, Nair, Negrito, Bandito, as well as Zolik. So, uh, hard point here. It's going to be a little bit different with snipers, something that I'm not used to seeing at the very least. Because usually snipers are going to be uh, holding down the uh, hill with an SMG or a shotgun, per se. And that is not going to be the case here. It's all sniping gameplay, which is going to be quite interesting. What's going on, Empire? It's Jeff, and this is my introduction to Darth, presented by Darth MJ, and I hope you guys enjoy. Darth's luck may have changed in June, when they picked up a player who would go on a rise over the next two years. Jeff joined Darth, and would soon take up a unique seat in the community. While having been around since the end of 2011, Spacebound had not yet reached their much-coveted 100,000 subscriber milestone until 2013. Nonetheless, Sway's team still had a successful future ahead of them. Obey had a history of releasing a variety of significant montages, and Infinite proved to be just another. It released in July and eventually spawned a sequel. Darth had reinvented themselves earlier in the year, and it proved to be successful as they reached 200,000 subscribers in August and released their three-part Resurgency montage, which featured some of the most insane editing to date. to just dump aim assist <laughs> there's always conversations like that uh, you know and I don't know if you like one of the things we've done is we've really we've quick scoping is not in the game um, and that was that's a conscious choice it's something that we've removed um, and I think that will make a lot of people happy. the dark news that quick scoping may be over in ghosts proved to be true and it was a bad decision for the future of the game while ultimately quick scoping would appear in ghosts it led to the popularity among only a small group of players who enjoyed sniping on the game, but for the most part, Ghost proved to be one of the least popular COD games to date. Lucky7 still dreamed of catching up to the other bigger teams and gaining the exposure they always wanted, as they reached 50,000 subscribers on YouTube in September. A year after the successful Catalyst montage was released by Pomage, he returned with a sequel which would prove to propel Pomage to the forefront of the community, despite the controversy the video caused him. Uh, why I left FaZe Clan, if you guys didn't know, I left FaZe right before Catalyst 2 was uploaded, like minutes before. It was a very hard decision and I will tell you guys from my point of view what happened. It all started near the summer. Beginning of summer where I had around so and so many subscribers and I started to realize I wanted to push my own brand I wanted to become more independent with myself. I wanted to start making my own decisions I wanted to represent myself more and more just for myself just Pomage not exactly phase or face Pomage Pomage departed phase after making catalyst 2 so that he could upload the video on his own channel rather than on the phase team channel Pomage became a role model for other players who would later make the decision to do things solo The team that Pomage had previously been a part of years ago, Optic, went through changes of their own. Hex announced in September that Optic would be dropping their entire sniping team, as they were simply too successful and distracted with their competitive team. Four months ago I started to realize that the way that the Optic sniping side of things was going was not what I envisioned, it was not what I have always had in mind for that particular side of Optic. Uh, and to give you a little bit of background on, on what's been happening beside, behind the scenes, because it's always um, it's always a mystery, right? It's always like, why is he making this decision? Like, So four months ago, while in Gfinity, I met uh, Optic K. Um, and I met him, and, and cool dude, right? Like, cool lad. I met him, talked to him a little bit, and, and as I was talking to him, I felt as though he was a stranger, right? Like, I've never really taken the time, or never really had the opportunity to, to talk to my teammates a certain way. I think it's always prided it. You know, we've always prided ourselves in the fact that we are a very close-knit family, right? Like, it's something that you guys have always said about optics, like a family first, bullshit comes second. Um, and while talking to him, I, I didn't feel this way. While talking to him, I didn't, I didn't feel that. And I, and I kept on thinking to myself, like, what's happening? Why, why am I this distant from one of my teammates? Um, so as soon as I got back, I started talking to Paul, and I started to tell him, you know, certain things that, that we needed to do as a team. 
to, to, to start to move in the right direction, to start to move in the direction that I've always envisioned the optic sniping team to be. Um, you know, making montages, it's all fine, it's all well, but it shouldn't be what we, like in my eyes, it should have never been what we based our entire, you know, s sniping on, right? Uh the year would end just the way it began, with a variety of teams reaching milestones. Saw hit 100,000 subscribers, and Air reached 100,000 on their new channel. But no team stood as high as FaZe. As the sniping community watched, FaZe reached 2 million subscribers before the end of the year. A day after Christmas, it was announced M4083 would make a return, the classic team that Predator had been a part of prior to joining Optic, but the comeback proved to find little success. Thank you guys for sticking around to watch the entire first part of the Evolution of Sniping documentary. Part 2 is also out right now and there's going to be a link down in the description or the annotation on the screen to get over to Part 2. Now I have a couple more things I want to talk about, but I'll also be talking about them at the end of Part 2 if you guys just want to hop over to Part 2 and continue watching in the meantime and then just check it out at the end of that. But here's a couple other things I want to talk about. First of all, my Twitter's on the screen. If you guys want to hit me up with a follow over there, along with the Phase movie and the Tensor movie, our annotations are on the screen, but obviously you probably don't want to cut it to doing that when you're like halfway through the evolution of sniping but maybe when you're done with that you, know, you want to watch that too who knows anyways the jev documentary i know i talked a little bit about this in the past i want to do one on jev jev's almost at 1 million subscribers and i want to see if we can somehow get jev's attention and work something out with jev because obviously when i did one with tensor i actually had to work with tensor on it it was a hundred percent accurate obviously we weren't going to mess up tensor's story when tensor was there watching the draft and looking at the draft and saying you know this part's inaccurate this is factually inaccurate you know change this change that here's what actually happened and when I could have tensor help me with that supply me with the information to make sure it was 100% accurate end up working out a lot better so if we get in touch with Jev maybe make one for Jev it doesn't matter if he even uploads on his channel or not but if we could just have the opportunity to speak to Jeff, make sure it's accurate, that'd be awesome. So I have a tweet down in the description where you guys can actually just click on the link to the tweet. It will automatically tweet it from there. You might have to log into your Twitter or whatever. But the tweet's already completely written, so you can just tweet that at me and at Jeff. And if Jeff, you know, sees a whole bunch of these, maybe we can work something out with Jeff to be able to do something like this. But if I just see a bunch of these tweets, and even if Jeff doesn't get back to us, and I see a whole lot of people support the idea of doing one on Jeff, then we'll probably just go ahead and do one on Jeff regardless no matter what so if you guys do want to see that this would be a great opportunity to try and spread the word on that hit that tweet down in the description smack that thing out there and let's see if you know we can get the attention of Jev and be able to pull it off with working with him but like I said otherwise if I see the lot of people want to see it I'll probably go ahead and make that one next anyways so hop on over to part two and I will see you guys at the end of part two